are here online with me in my <clears throat> fast, fun, easy journal creation group. Not sure how many folks are going to join me live, but I will carry on anyway. Um, I'm really excited about uh, talking about what's going to go on in this group. I think that we can have some fun here. But of course, I do have another group where the mastermind is happening. And that is really where all of the knowledge base is. So let's talk about some of those things today. Hopefully I'll be giving enough information to help folks that are stuck move forward and also give you some insights about ways to tweak your business uh, as it's going forward. Let me jump on here and say hi personally. Hello everybody. This is Rebecca from Montana. I live in northwestern Montana and right now I'm looking out of my office window and watching it snow. Uh, it's pretty exciting up here in Montana. We had a mountain lion in our yard the other day and that was kind of fun. My dog was a little bit excited about that moment. <laughs> Um, but uh, he was probably chasing the deer that sleep in our, I, I live next to an organic farm. And so I think there's deer that sleep in the back area there uh, around the fence. And I think he was probably stalking them. We also have some wild turkeys that cross the street. Uh, and so he might, I mean, it's a veritable, you know, cruise ship smorgasbord out here for a mountain lion so he's not starving to death i'm pretty sure but it was pretty surprising when my dog went outside and saw him but anyway that's life in montana uh, i like to keep my lives short and sweet because i know that many people are doing this as a side hustle and i know that they're out there working they might be taking off for lunch or grabbing a few minutes while they eat a sandwich so i like to respect your time and so i'm going to be very focused on the information that I give to you today. So thanks for joining me. Hi, Faith. I'm glad to see that you're here. Uh, and hopefully other people will join us throughout the broadcast. So let me slip on over to what we're going to talk about today. Low content books. What are the strategies that work? Now, hopefully you've picked up the easy four-step process guide that I mentioned. You can jump on over to my website, journalsunami.com, and you can grab that PDF document and follow along. It has a lot of information in it, and anybody who's just getting started, it really will, will cover what the steps are, but it goes way in depth. You can check off. It's a checklist so that you're following each of the processes. It also gives you links to other important information on KDP to help you get going. I ran a poll in the group last week and asked folks to talk to me and tell me a little bit about what they wanted to see going on or what they were stuck on. And so keywords is a big deal because keywords is super important, especially on Amazon, which is essentially a sales search engine. It's like Google, except for sales, picking the right categories, pricing products, profit and potential, and how to brand your books. So this entire presentation today should touch on each one of those topics for you. So anybody who's joined us or is in this group, I assume that you kind of know what a low content book is. You can always run to Amazon and type in journal books. We call them low content books because it covers a broad ex uh, group of people. It's journals and diaries and lined notebooks, prompt books, writing prompt books, uh, uh, comic book templates that you can create your own comic books. Even coloring books basically are low content books. It's basically books that have little to no content inside of them. So anything to me, anything that's under 2000 words, I consider a low content book. So I even make children's picture books that are under 2000 words. And I consider those as part of my low content inventory. Uh, so these are just a smattering of some of the top selling low content books that are in the journal category. And as you can see, they're just daily journals. They're lined books that maybe have a little journal pump 
prompt at the top of the page. And then the person fills in their own ideas on the rest of the page. Nine times out of 10, some of the people that are making the most money in this industry, they only sell six by nine, 120 page lined notebooks, and that's all they sell to make the money that they're making. A lot of times people join in the whole low content uh, hoopla, this sort of fad that's going on, and then they quickly get frustrated because they don't know where to start. They oftentimes don't know what to make and they don't know how to price their books. Those are the three top questions that I see being asked because there are so many variables or people come into this thinking that there's so many variables when in fact there really aren't very many variables at all. Once you cover these top questions, you'll see how really simple and easy it is not just to answer these questions, but find the answers yourself. So when I was learning this process last year for myself, I came up with this easy four-step process that I started implementing in my own business. My first step is research. So with research, I'm a research assistant. I spent 10 years as a research assistant for a psychologist. And when I talk about research, I'm talking about literally going to the stacks of the library. This is back in the 80s, you know, card deck. Some of you are old enough to realize what I'm talking about. Go into the card catalog. Most kids don't even know what a card catalog is today. So when I talk research, my hist my my background is hardcore library research for a college level PhD psychologist. So when I go to Amazon and I research, we have so many tools today between you know Google and Uber Suggest and other research tools that help us, uh, KDP Rocket, KD Spy, so many things that help us do research on Amazon it really makes our job easy. Now, one of the things that I've done for myself is I re research one niche a week. I don't overcomplicate it. I pick one niche. And if I see other niches that catch my eye as I'm doing my research, I'll write them down in a notebook. And that way I can come back to them. So I actually have an entirely a huge list of niches that I can just jump to if my brain is having a brain fart. So I spend one entire day researching just one niche to find out what they like, what they're buying, what the books look like, and what the books look like inside. Then I create those journals, and I'll create those journals based upon my, my research. I have multiple brands, so I might create journals under a number of those brand names because Amazon only allows you to dominate so much of a front page. So if I have five different brands, that are using the same sort of journal but different covers, then that gives me more opportunity to dominate the front page. That's kind of a secret tip. Then I upload it to KDP and the upload process 100% depends upon my research because my title will be based upon my research, my subtitle will be based upon my research, the description of my book will be based upon my research, the amount of pages that I have will be based upon my research, um, the size of my book will be based upon my research. So all of the things that go into the create and the upload 100% are dependent upon my research in that niche and what people are buying. And then once I've done all that, then basically I just repeat the process again and again and again and again. And that's how you get to have 5,000, 10,000, or 20,000 journals is just by doing these steps over and over again. So in my process document, I go into this in a lot more detail uh, on that checklist, but let's just talk a little bit more about each of these steps, just in a little bit more of a granular way. So research covers what type of journal. I go to Amazon and I look under my keywords and in that niche. So if I'm making a journal for nurses, for doctors, for coaches, what kind of coach? A basketball coach, a softball coach. Just creating a composition notebook is not going to get your book sold. Composition notebook, the keyword itself has thousands and thousands, over 10,000 
competition for that keyword. But a composition notebook for a nurse, composition notebook for a teacher, composition notebook for, you know, blank, 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 whatever comes to your mind for a quilter, for a knitter, you know, any of those things, journal, journal prompt books, daily planners, any of those things can all be niched down into different professions, hobbies, uh, animal lovers, any of those things, fads that you see. Um, so you want to look at when what type of journals, notebooks, excuse me, diaries, any of those things. So you go to Amazon and you look, then you read the reviews, reading the one star and two star reviews will really give you a great idea about what's missing in that niche. It also tells you what the people want. Then you have an Amazon look inside feature. Most books uh, that have been put up in the last two years all have a look inside feature. So it can give you an idea of what that diary looks like. Many of them are just only lined notebooks. So maybe you can come in with a slightly more complicated design and actually dominate that niche by just making a few changes, by just putting a few words on the page, maybe prompt journal prompts on your page instead of it just being a lined notebook. So that look inside feature can be important. Looking at my titles also, what, the, what are the titles that are happening in that niche? Uh, CreateSpace used to allow long spammy titles and we can't do that anymore. So really seeing the best way to make sure your keyword is in your title goes into my research. And also a lot of people ask me, how do I write descriptions? All the descriptions are written there right for you. Just look at the descriptions of the top selling books. Don't copy anything. Don't copy what other people are doing because that's stealing. But you can take and repurpose the things that they've done, rewrite it for yourself. And now you have a ready made description. Take, you know, the best parts of five or six different descriptions. This one has, you know, bullet points. This one, you know, talks about who the book is for, very targeted way. This one maybe has some other descriptive information that you would have not thought about. So reading those descriptions certainly helps you write your own. Then you go and create your book. <clears throat> now I teach people how to use PowerPoint. The reason why I teach people how to use PowerPoint is I've used Photoshop. I've used Publisher. I've used Word, I've used InDesign, I've used Illustrator, I've used them all and they all made me insane. Most people's courses teach people, I've used Canva. Most people's courses confuse people because people focus on what they're going to use to create the book and really the process of creating the book is exactly the same across all of these platforms. So you want to master one tool Pick one tool and learn to master the one tool. Um, Mel, I'll answer your question in just one second. You want to save those images at 300 DPI and PowerPoint allows you to do it. One reason I use PowerPoint is because you can have PowerPoint on a Mac and you can have PowerPoint on a PC. Keynote, you can only have on a Mac. Word is really not easy to create design journals that are uh, image or layout intensive. Word will drive you crazy. And I started using Word and I stopped doing journals. I could have been farther ahead because I was using Word three years ago and it was so frustrating. PowerPoint, after PowerPoint, you have to have PowerPoint 2016 or above um, because after 2016, PowerPoint allowed you to create images at 300 DPI and it will save your images at 300 DPI. And then you want to batch your creations and PowerPoint allows you to do that. A journal really is just really one page repeated about 120 times. Most journals are that and PowerPoint allows you to create the one page and then quickly make iterations of that page fast. Uh, in my course, I show how to make a journal in under five minutes, a 120 page journal in under five minutes. And the same goes for making multiple covers. So by mat batching your creations, you can create multiple books in a day. So you can start off making five in a day, then make 10 in a day, 
make 50 in a day, make 100 in a day. It's really not as challenging as you might think to make 100 books in a day. I wouldn't say start off doing that, but it's easy to make five in a day. And if you make five in a day, that's 25 over five days. In 52 weeks, you'll have over a thousand journals. Now that's doable for just about anybody, even if you have a full-time job. If you do the processes that I show you, you can have over a thousand journals by the time Christmas rolls around next year. Going back to Mel's question, you can only have one KDP account. You can only have one KDP account. Amazon will close down all of your accounts if you have multiple accounts. So what's important to understand is there's KDP accounts where you're publishing your books and then there's something called author central accounts that you might see where people have their books lined up like a little web page. And that's something very different. Uh, it's not something that is part of KDP. You, you set up a author account by itself and you're allowed three different aliases on one author account. And then you just need another email to open another author account where you'd have three more aliases. You'd have another email and then have three more aliases. I don't know why they set it up so that only three aliases can be per author central account. But you can have as many brands and as many author central accounts as you want, but you can only have one KDP account per bank account. So if you have another business or you become a publisher and you have a totally separate EIN, totally separate business, totally separate bank account, you need to go to Amazon and ask their permission to have a, another account. The same goes for your, if you have an FBA account, the same thing goes for that too. So you need to have your, you need to talk to Amazon if you want to have multiple accounts. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, going back to the creation process, um, when you save your creations and save your interiors to reuse, and this actually, the whole brand thing goes towards create, because when you're creating your books and your covers, I sometimes will create across multiple brands, even though my interior might be very much the same, because it's just a notebook, my covers and my brand may be different. So that's something to think about, which is why I talked about uh, Mel's question. When you save your interiors to reuse, think about it. Once you've made a whole bunch of different journals, especially if you're focused on just making notebooks, you can use those interiors over and over again. One of the women that I know that makes a very good living at doing this, she only makes six by nine lined notebooks. That's all she makes. So she doesn't have to make any other interiors. They're just line notebooks and they're all six by nine and they're all a hundred pages. That's all she uses. So she doesn't have to make any more. If you're making a planner, I can pull out one of my undated planners and put in different uh, niche quotes. And now that planner can be used for nurses. That planner can be used for horses. So I have the base planner itself. And then I just repurpose that interior for another niche by just changing some of the words that are inside or changing just little pieces. But the basic hard part of that planner I use over and over again. Now, the best sizes, as I just mentioned, one person that does very well in this business, she has all six by nine. That's all she makes, 100 pages, all lined. The only thing that differs is her, um, is her covers. Eight, and a, eight by 10 is another popular size, and eight and a half by 11. I was making mostly eight and a half by 11 for little children, but then somebody pointed out to me that little kids' backpacks Eight and a half by 11 size books don't go in their little mini backpacks very easily. So I started actually making six by nine and seven by 10 and eight by 10 for little kids. You just need to make sure that your lines in the notebooks are wide lined and not college lined notebooks. So that would be the difference if you're focusing on making kids notebooks. And you want to set goals and meet them. Now, when you're setting goals, Goals can be fluid. So I set monthly goal, I set annual goals, then I set my monthly goals, then from my monthly goals I set my weekly goals. And that allows my weekly goals to be 
somewhat fluid in case I get sick or a party happens or I want to go traveling or do something else. I could still meet my monthly goals, which then still let me meet my annual goals. Now, when I make my weekly goals, if something stands in the way, then the next week I can just pick up the slack and catch up and still make my monthly goal. If you're always missing your goal, then you need to sit down and have a serious conversation with yourself about what it is that you're doing and <clears throat> ask yourself why you're not reaching your goal. If you have somebody that's sick in the family or you have a job that gives you unpredictable schedules, then you just work around that. One of the women that um, is my was my mentor who's passed away now, her goals were to stop working her nine to five job. It took her two and a half years to get to enough journals, but she knew that she had to make a certain amount of journals every single day and she had a monetary goal that she needed to, to reach to basically replace her income. So that was her goal to make a certain amount of money. So however many journals that she had to make to make that income, that was her goal. So she just kept making journals. She'd make a certain amount of journals every morning. She would upload them when she came home at night. She worked a full-time job and had to commute back and forth each way. So even if you work a full-time job, you can still do this, and you just have to set that goal within your own parameters of what it is that you need to do. If you're making your goals, then you're moving yourself forward. Because for me, what I always tell my students is one done is better than none done. Now, I did create a print-on-demand planner that's very helpful. You can get it for free uh, at this website, journalsunami.com slash content calendar, and you can download it for free. <clears throat> Excuse me. I also have them perfect bound. Some people want them perfect bound, so you can go to Amazon. I can put those links there for you so you can see that. Um, but it's I know it's helping me. That's what I made it for, and it goes month by month. It has my monetary goals, and it always it also has my quarterly goals, and then each quarter is broken down by month, and so then I can plan ahead. So when I see niches that I want to do, I can already write down, I'm going to be starting my Valentine's Day journals when. I'm going to start my Halloween planners, and I already put it in my planner book. So when I turn to that page, just like any planner, then I already know that it's ready to go. So again, my mantra to my students is one done is better than none done. So you don't have to apologize to anyone that you didn't get your stuff done because really it's your business, nobody else's business. What are your goals for yourself? You can only apologize to yourself so many times if you don't make your goals. So you have to seriously ask yourself, what am I doing? Now, I know people that are making five and $10,000 doing this. I can't promise you any income, but I know that if you're not making any books, you're not going to make any income at all. So at least focus on getting one done and then get the next one done and then get the next one done. It's really that simple. Once we get to the upload part, because you've done the research, you've created the book, you open your KDP account, you can have unlimited aliases. So that goes back to Mel's question. You can have as many as you want. Amazon doesn't care. As you can imagine, many famous writers uh, write under aliases. Uh, J.K. Rowling wrote her Harry Potter books, and then she wanted to write a little bit more adult, risque book. So she had an alias because she wanted to make sure that little kids didn't mistakenly see her name and pick up a book that was, you know, a bodice ripper, romance novel. So she very clearly wanted to have separate aliases. Many people that write in the romance genre have multiple aliases for that very reason. Many people write in the science fiction genre might also write in the romance genre, and they don't want their science fiction fans to pick up their romance books uh, in by accident. For myself in the low content niche, I do Christian journals and I also write journals for tarot people and in the occult. And those people don't necessarily share the same <clears throat> values. And so I write their books under different brand names because I don't want them to get mixed up. Also writing kids journals, you know, um, I don't want kids to pick up 
books that might have curse words on them and be snarky. So I do like to separate my aliases based upon sort of the niche and the flavor of the type of books that I'm doing. Um, I also really can't overemphasize creating a spreadsheet to track your titles and ISBNs. When CreateSpace closed down and we all had to move to KDP, I was very, very happy that I had my almost 2,000 journals meticulously documented on my Google spreadsheet. That's what I use is Google spreadsheets So because it's online. It's in the cloud. I'll never lose it. <clears throat> I had every title, every ISBN, um, and every brand that it was done, one for your own estate. Uh, your family will know the books that you've done. If something happens to you, then they'll have a record of all the books that you've done um, so that they can go to Amazon and prove that they are the owners of those of your estate and therefore those books. So that's one thing. But also when our books all moved, we all had to go and fix our titles, fix our back end keywords and fix our um, categories. And so I was literally able to go through my list and able to check off every single book to make sure that every single one of my books was done. So having that spreadsheet certainly saved myself a headache. So I can't overemphasize having something to track your books. Start it now before you get too many so you don't have to go backwards. And then once it's uploaded, it can take 24 to 48 hours. And then once it's been approved, it goes live immediately on Amazon. The fourth step is basically just repeat the process. Pat yourself on the back once you've uploaded one journal um, because you've done a lot more than other people who are sitting there planning, planning, planning and never get to the upload part. Again, I can't overemphasize setting goals and keeping those goals for yourself because really at the end of the day, it's really only you that you have to be accountable to. I really emphasize to my students, and I've taught several hundred people at this point in time, start with easy, just lined notebooks for your first 100 books. Six by nine, 100 or 120 pages. Use the same interior over and over again. Don't use bleed. Use one that has margins around it because KDP bleed can really give you a headache. So have one of the interiors that has a border around it and the lines are in the middle. That way you don't have to deal with KDP and their bleed insanity. You have the same book. You don't have to think about what kind of interior you're trying to make. You just focus on making covers, researching kinds of covers, learning the process that goes into batching and making more than five books at a time, making more than five covers learning how to upload more than five books at a time. Then you can upload 10 books at a time. Then you can upload 20 books at a time. And by the time you get to that 100th book, so many things will have clicked in your head about how this process works. Then you can start turning to some of the templates that I show you that other people are selling. You don't have to make these templates yourself. You don't have to do this on your own. I share enough different types of interior templates that other people are making that we can repurpose for our own businesses that starting out, don't even think about making any interior by yourself. You're insane if you do. <laughs> um, so be easy on yourself. Start easy. Get that first 100 books done, and then you will see how simple this process is, and then you'll be off to the races. And my processes are really only there to help you get started. Create processes for yourself. Create things that help you make it easy on yourself. You might hate the way that I show you how to upload. You may find a different way that you do it easier and faster for yourself. It's just like starting in kindergarten, and by the time you get to high school or college, you now have your own methodology of how you study, how you take notes, how you do those things. But your teacher, which is what I am, is just there to create the map, the basics for you to work within some guidelines just to help you so that you don't try and have to think of everything to begin with. And that's really all this is about. So create those processes for yourself and then celebrate your success. Be kind to yourself because this can and should be fun. 
I know for myself, since I've started this journey journal process and many people in my group have also said the same thing that once your brain is liberated and in this entire creative niche, I've started doing beading again. I've started picking up my guitar again. I've started picking up instruments again. I've started doing all kinds of creative things again. It's really so much fun. Um, I, I just can't even tell you just the journaled journals are just one process. I've started making children's picture books because I use the exact same PowerPoint process I do to make my journals. I just go hire somebody to write me a quick little 2000 word book. And then I source the images from the same places that I source my images for my journals. And then I make a kid's book and I can, because it's a kid's book and it's a reading wordy book, I can also turn that into a Kindle. It's really super easy to do. So this is just the beginning of a process that can really make years and years and years of passive income for you. So to recap the four steps to success, we research, then we create, then we upload, and then we repeat. And so it, you create it, upload it, and profit. That's as simple as it can get to create a very, very nice, simple, side hustle that can pay you forever. I have books that I made five years ago that still sell today. So if you're stuck, you have to ask yourself what's missing. One of the nice things about the low content journey is when you're writing a book, so book people who write one book at a time, they need to sell lots and lots of the one book to be able to make an income. The reason why us folks who are doing low content are making so many books is because by making many books, I only have to sell a few of those books at one time. So if I have 400, 500, 1,000 books, I only need to sell a couple of those 1,000 books versus a person who has one book who now has to sell a 1,000 books. So that person has to spend money on marketing. They have to spend money on ads. They have to go tell their friends and family and get people to review their books and do all that stuff. So they have to focus on all that process to launch their book, review the book, sell ads. If I'm creating thousands of books, I don't need to run ads unless I want to. I don't have to have anybody even find my book because nine times out of 10 people will find my book if I've done my research right. And if I have a 155 sale book day, that means that several people have purchased just a handful of my books. So that means maybe five people bought, you know, 20 of my books. I have a hundred book day, right? So that's a whole different story when you're, when you have multiple books out there. So if you're stuck on this process, what is really missing? It's not so much just about making books. You have to sell them too. Sadly, most of the courses that are out there that are about low content books, they only show you how to make the books. They show you how to make them in PowerPoint. They show you how to make the cover. They show you how to make an interior. They show you how to upload to KDP. Then they say adios and have a nice day. And then that's all you get. I don't do that. I want my students to be successful and I want my students to be able to turn this into an income. So I turn this into a course. I go step by step over the shoulder. I show every step that's in my process. In that course, I have a Facebook mastermind group. You're in the free version of the group. So I have a mastermind group. There's over 14 units of training along with the over the shoulder beginning stuff, there's ongoing training that I focus on keyword research. I focus on um, how to do the research. I focus on tools that we use to do the research. I take the templates that I show you to buy and we take them apart and I show you how to put them back together or smash them together with other templates so that they're differentiated. I do weekly live Q and A's not like this one. This is a PowerPoint. My live Q and A's are done going to Amazon, doing research, showing how to do something, 
going into the template, showing how I do it in PowerPoint. We have hundreds of helpful group members. We're all helping each other on this journey. And also, more importantly, up-to-date processes. When tools change, when tools are updated, Tangent Templates just recently did an update. KDP Rocket is going to do it, is doing their update. You know, I talked to Dave himself to find out what was the holdup on that. So having my fingers on the pulse of some of those things. I was one of the first people to post when create space totally closed down and we couldn't even get in anymore. I was one of the first people to report in other groups saying we can't get into create space anymore. I hope y'all moved and then also show people a process of what to do to update their back end stuff. So I have a course, it's $197, but if you're watching this today, then it's still $97. And the, it's a one-time payment. I am not into continuity at this point in time. I really feel it's important to deliver the content to people and get you out there making money because it's time that you invest in yourself. And I wanted to make it easy and accessible for people to be able to invest in themselves. So what are folks saying? These are just two of the people that are in my group. I have hundreds of students and these are just two of the people um marie and louise they've bought courses they love my hands-on process they love that i do step by step i'm very clear i come from a teaching background i've taught wordpress for years i've taught small business owners wordpress i was a search engine optimization specialist for over uh since early 2000s. I've been working for software companies since 1999. I had my first computer in 1983. I've had my first websites on GeoCities. I've been chuckling with some people about GeoCities. Um, that's where I learned HTML. Um, so I've been helping people on this online journey, um, especially older women like myself. I'm 63 years old. So I know what it's like to be lost in the weeds of high technology and be overwhelmed with all the things that are out there to learn. And I don't want my students to be lost. I want them to have very clear, precise pathway up the mountain. Once you have that pathway, if you want to go veering off into the woods and go bushwhacking in the weeds, you'll always know where the path is to get back to. So go off and go exploring. I always tell my students to go out and play but always come back, come back to the group, come back to the group. If you get lost and you've gone some and come share with us, you know, when you have a sale, when you've done something different, we're here to fix what's missing. We're here to create passive income and we're here to create either a full-time or a side to hustle for folks. So if you're interested in taking this up to the next level and move from the free course and all the questions to having your questions answered, I hope that you'll move into my course, invest in yourself, because if you jump in now by next year, by Christmas, again, even if you're just doing a few books a day, 25, five books a day, 25 books a week, you'll have over a thousand books done by Christmas. And a thousand books done by Christmas can make you quite a bit of money if you've already set the foundation to do this right from the very beginning then you can i want to be in bali next year that's what i said on my on my live yesterday to my other group i'd like to be in bali having a good time on base you know from my passive income that i've made on amazon so i hope you'll join me too um, that's the end of my presentation today um, I hope you'll join me in my step-by-step in-depth training. 